Hey, Redcon Raider here. Today's video is dedicated to the Raiders, the fine folks who help make these videos possible. With special thanks to Revenant, Eloise, A Nerd in Warpaint, Dragon Matrix 7, Eerie V23, Excelsior, Goatlieb, Kazorm, Lima, Nathan Welch Jr., Thomas Piatkowski, Trip Hop and Skip, and Valenrook. Thanks for your support, guys. That said, let's get started. And welcome back to Strange Horticulture. As we continue following the uh, branching paths of this growing mystery. Uh, now, I think we are getting towards the end of the campaign, but uh, I may have mis misgaged the number of days we had left. It might actually run longer than I thought it did. But uh, I suppose we'll see what sort of events we start triggering over the next couple of in-game days. That said, let's uh, get back to it. Well, that seems peculiar. Uh, every day, she attentively followed the teachings of the Arda. Every day, she patiently performed the tasks given to her. Every day, thoughts of the book itched away at the back of her mind. Day 10, Sunday. As usual, let's start with a card. Oh, yep, yep, that was easy enough. A secret uncovered is a secret no more. Two miles north of Foxfield. And we know exactly where Foxfield is. Three ravens circle above, their caws and croaks cleaving the silence. An omen. I take what I came for and leave. Hmm. It is quite easy to cut oneself on the jagged leaves, as I have just found out. Really? Nothing about the luminescent flowers? Though I suppose sawtoothed edges are also relevant. We did have a recent entry referencing sharp leaves. But I think that might have just been Dranthium? Definitely not Trimblehuff. Trimblehuff is just like my go to for a lot of these, because I think that's a name that sticks in my brain. It's a very... a very memorable name. Okay, maybe I am just thinking Dranthium. David Schaefer, the mailman. One from your librarian friend today. That's it? David, you're usually a lot more talkative than that. But, uh, yeah, okay, thanks. In reference to your question the other day about Long Meg, I'm afraid I do not have an answer. But Calder Abbey has a wealth of knowledge on local lore. If you ever go there, the monks will request a plant from you, but they won't tell you what they want. A sort of test. They've never allowed me in to look through their stacks. Simone. Yeah, I guess we should check that out. I mean, we don't really need information on Long Meg at this point, but... They may have something else for us. Not like we have anywhere else we need to go right now. A small window opens within a much larger oak door. From the darkness within, a voice proclaims, Only a friend may enter. 
Oh, well, that one's easy. That's Foxglove, the uh, flower of friendship. The investigator asked us for that one back on, like, day two, when he was still trying to make headway with the Sisterhood of Arduena. Foxbutton, not Foxglove. I think Foxglove is actually a real plant. Yep, and that is the friendship flower. The hatch snaps shut, and the oak door swings inward slowly without a sound. I am ushered in by a man wearing a plain brown robe. He nods silently when I ask about Long Meg, and leads me through the abbey to a small library filled with scrolls and books. Without a word, he pauses for a moment, surveying before selecting a scroll and handing it to me. Nice. Sheep Snap. Ovium Viridi. The Sheep Snap is thought to bring good fortune when prepared correctly. The green seed pods of the Sheep Snap have a hard outer shell and sound hollow when tapped. To the south, they call these plants Bulbs of Bayonne. Okay, well, that's nothing we have right now. We have nothing with obvious seed pods. Regarding Long Meg, there is a stone circle north of Undermere. According to local legend, some hundreds, perhaps even thousands of years ago, a witch known as Long Meg lived nearby, along with her daughters. They were wild, godless people who practiced evil magic until one night they went too far, and Meg and her daughters were turned to stone. The tall stone that stands apart from the main circle is called Long Meg by the locals. And yeah, that's pretty much stuff we already knew. But uh, to be fair, we wouldn't have normally had an excuse to go to the stone circle before finding that letter. We just happened to go there early because I was clicking on random locations. Verona Green the Occult Scholar. The Sisterhood are trying my patience again. If the old Arda was around... But she's not. They kept secrets for hundreds of years. If ever there was a time to share them, it is now. They know of a way to defeat this servant. Some ritual or weapon or something. But their stubborn pride won't bring them to ask for help. Well, I won't sit idly by and do nothing. I'd better have a little chat with this new Arda. And I think I'll take some Mountain Astery with me. Mountain Astery. Right, that's the, uh, the old book plant. What's that one do again? Circumstance bonus on persuasion checks. Yeah, that tracks. Good luck. Weeping Bell. Lamentum Nixus. Also a Pokemon. A plant that is believed by many to lead to gold. You'd have about as much luck searching for the end of a rainbow. The soft frilled leaves can soothe insect bites and stings. It is also known as Golden Light and sometimes Fool's Hope. Oh, Golden Light. Yeah, we, uh... We have that. I think. I want to say it was this one. The leaves do look similar, but less, um... Less droopy. Hmm. I mean, the leaves are close, and the flowers do look like bells. So we'll go ahead and tag that. We have uh, certainly tagged plants for less. And then we uh, also confirmed Mountain Astery.
All right, moving on. Elabor. Thomas Grain. I have finished the designs you asked me to work on. Be very careful unwrapping these. Some of the glasswork is quite delicate, and I have taken great care transporting them. Okay. My lab equipment is finally here. I will now be able to brew elixirs using ingredients from my plants. Really now? I, uh, I had assumed getting a brewing kit would be a much more involved process, but I am not complaining. Patterson's Guide to Fatal Fungi and Their Antidotes. Oh my. Apparently several of the mushrooms we've been collecting are in fact fatal. Well, we'll just uh, keep this on hand then, for when someone inevitably poisons themselves, I guess. Oh, and we can uh, now brew up some Baylock's Elixir. Assuming we can figure out which which plants these are supposed to be. Nine petals, very floofy center. I feel like that's a pretty good match. Now we need a star-like flower. Five petals, two dongles. Those are rounded petals. Oh, there we go. Yep, that looks like a match. Oh, right, and then we do need that first one. Five rounded petals with two dongles. You know, this one might not have nine petals. This might be... It's hard to tell because of the angle. Yeah, I think that might be our weakest match. Let's see if we can find something a bit closer. Maybe with uh, more pronounced creases on the petals. No, that's even less of a match. Hey! Baylock's Elixir Acquired. Let's go ahead and tag that. And um, I guess we'll just tuck it off to the right for now. Eventually we may have a shelf specifically dedicated to elixirs, but for now that's obviously not much of a concern. I think that was basically our brewing tutorial. Bethany Coleman, the sister. The new Arda wouldn't like me being here, but the forest is in danger. I spoke with Verona Green earlier. It's bad. If the Dendru has awoken, then it will come for us. You must place an offering at the altar of Arduina. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Alright, we have a stretch of river. 
and some unmarked reference points. Looks to be uh, north end of the Grisdale Forest. Yeah, yeah. Just south of this unmarked mountain. That does seem to match up. It seems Beth has been able to keep her fellow sisters away from this part of the forest. For now, at least. The trees are thick here, old too. The altar seems to belong here, as much a part of the forest as the gnarled trunks and twisting roots. I must place an offering to the goddess Arduina. And we have a choice. Let's see what our options are here. Ember Soul. Uh, protective properties, sometimes given as an offering to various deities. And then Caldery. Uh, those who worship the Huntress Arduina place it to ensure a successful hunt. Interesting. Well, both are used for divine offerings, but only one of them specifically name drops Arduina, which feels relevant. You know what? Let's, uh, let's go for Caldery. That one specifically mentions Arduina, and Forest Vare is out here, hunting for the Servant. So this, this might bolster his efforts. Fingers crossed. Evulum. Bacusus palustris. The scent it produces is considered overpowering by some, but it is said to stimulate the senses and rejuvenate aching bones. Evulum has many short, pretty leaves. Which doesn't sound familiar? But let's have a quick peek. Yeah, we have nothing over here that resembles those leaves. So we'll just uh, keep an eye out. Natalie Cooper. I'm being harassed by loonies, shouting about the redemption saying they're going to set it free, whatever the hell that means. Well, they can take their seeds of whatever, woken something or other nonsense, and stick it where the sun doesn't shine. I'm not joining their damn cult. I just want to tend my garden in peace. I'm looking for some lark shine to drive them away if they come round again. Ah, uh, yes, the poison spike fruit. I know it well. Under normal circumstances, I might hesitate to give this to someone, but, uh... Desperate times, I suppose. To be fair, I believe it is just listed as painful, not fatal. Lyle of Neptune. Boletus Veritum. Also called Truthsayer. This plant will force a person to tell the truth when eaten. The sparsely petaled pale flowers give off a strong scent. And once again, completely dissimilar to anything we currently have. Not a lot of matches today. We got a fair number of new pages, but for stuff like Sheep Snap and Lyle of Neptune, which we definitively do not have, Anyway, let's go uh, sleep off this rising dread. See what the morrow holds for us. Nine o two X eight o three. 
In time, she learned that the sisterhood had secrets. Or had she always known that? Had she come to them by chance? Or had she sought them out deliberately? She wasn't sure. But by now, she knew what she wanted. And she would do anything to get it. Oh yeah, we're getting towards the end here. Four, maybe five more days. Day 11, Monday. Morning, Hellebore. And once again, we set off in pursuit of our dreams. Which would be very uplifting, if not for all the corpses. No hidden marks. And the only numerical markers on our map are grid coordinates and mountain heights. And I think this looks to be mountain heights. Oh yeah, there we go. Let me just get this lined up. And we are headed right here. The impressive ridge line of the Crinkle Crags stretches across the full width of my vision. Days like today are worth being alive for. A colorful plant stands out amongst the moss. Oh my, yeah, that is very distinctive. I think that's one of the ones they used in the promo art. Larkshine, where are you going? Wow, our plants shuffled all over the place. What's going on here? Okay, so let's have a look at this. The leaves feel smooth and soft underneath. The large stamen seems to be the source of that acerbic odor. Like a pitcher plant. That does make sense. Yeah, we have a we have a lot of pitcher plants down near where I live, in the midst of the swamplands. In fact, I think I think that one is based directly on one of the variety that grows down here. On we go. George Campbell. My old man reckons there's a plant what can find pots of gold buried underground. Don't know what it's called, but I uh, bet you do. Tell you what, when I'm rich, I'll throw a share of the gold your way. Well, with a deal like that on the table, how can I possibly say no? And look at that, he even paid for it. Lesser Mary Dock, Cacinus Parvum. The round flower head of the Mary Dock is made up of smaller yellow florets. A single drop of the strong smelling sap from this plant can utterly drain a person's mental faculties, rendering them slow and uncomprehending. Uh, well, thankfully we don't seem to have anything like that in stock because I don't think I'd want that in my shop. Round bulbs of yellow florets. Man, just look at those full shelves of positively ID'd plants. You'll love to see it. Anna Aylford, the cultist. I have a task for you that would greatly aid the seeds of redemption. One of the Drear is in town, and we know he's paid you a visit already, no doubt feeding his habit. 
We suspect he's here to hunt the Dendru. If he returns, give him some of this. He will make a worthy sacrifice to the Dendru. Let's help him on his way. Are you asking me to kill a man? And that would be Lesser Mary Doc. Freshly watered, completely by accident. This must be uh, Ennis Aylford's first cult. He is not good at this. You have to win my trust first by plying me with gifts and other fantastical promises. Then you move up to murder. Amos Duncan, our friend, the Collector. I'm heading out on the road again, but before I leave, I wanted to store some valuables in a safe. I don't trust myself to remember the combination, and I certainly don't trust myself to write it down anywhere and not lose it. Yeah, the last combination you had ended up in pieces in your pocket. This is where you come in. Surely you've got something up your sleeve for me? Well, gosh, what a coincidence. I just happened to have some Baylox elixir right here. Try not to uh, stare at any blank walls for 12 hours after drinking this. Just, just saying. I'm sure he'll be fine. Spring Wax Cap. Juvenus Agaricum. An edible mushroom with some mild medicinal properties. When dried and eaten, it can help relieve pain. Very distinctive. That's like, um, enoki mushrooms. I eat those. Sadly, not similar to any of the growing collection of mystery mushrooms we currently have in stock. Mary Holmes. I'm looking for something specific. A very unusual looking fungus that takes me back to my childhood with its wonderful smoky smell. A fungus that smells like smoke. I don't think that's any of the ones we have. The only plant we have that I think smells like smoke is gray sandfire. Is that one a fungus? I really figured it was more of like a, a succulent, like aloe vera. Oh yeah, look at that. No payment, but that's fine. At least it won't kill anyone. Simone Green, the librarian. Oh goodness, Hellebore, you haven't been getting enough food? That's terrible. Whatever will become of you? My mother's had me looking into this servant creature for you, but I'm afraid I've not been getting anywhere. It's strange. I'm sure I've seen some references to it, but I'm drawing a blank when I try to find anything. I think Lord Fremont's archives would be a good place to look. I was going to post this to you, but I was in town anyway, so I thought I'd drop it off in person. That, and sneak in some hellebore hugs. I like you, Simone. You seem like a good egg. Both Hellebore and I thank you. Except for the food thing. I feed him plenty. Mostly with the uh, souls of my victims, but that is neither here nor there. 
I've not been getting anywhere looking through my collections in Ampleside for any mention of the servant. But Lord Fremont's archives at Muncaster are home to many ancient and esoteric scrolls, covering a wide variety of subjects. It might be worth a visit. Simone. Well, you know what, Simone? That does sound like it is worth a visit. And given that we currently have the will to explore, I think we'll look into it immediately. I follow Fremont's manservant deep into the vaults of the castle. Two hours later, I still have found no mention of the servant. On the verge of giving up, a name grabs my attention. The Woken Dendru. Didn't Verona say that was another name for the servant? Yeah, also there's a cult that's been screaming that name at you for like three days. The Woken Dendru is loyal to the summoner, who becomes its master and can bend its terrible power to their will. This servant is assumed to be immortal, since it has no known vulnerabilities, but that does not mean that it cannot be defeated. Many hundreds of years ago, a site of ritual importance was created, near Black Combe, to the south of the Watcher, the Great Oak, and the Dendru was ousted from this world. Unfortunately, although we know that five plants were required for the ritual, the specific plants are not known. Yes, that does sound like it might be important. Also, uh, it does seem to confirm that the Great Oak is simply a reference point, which is why we didn't find anything there. The actual ritual site would be somewhere south of that. Though we have no idea what we actually need once we get there. That might actually be what Verona is trying to get from the Sisterhood. That would make sense. We'll have to see what uh, Verona or Sister Bethany say next time they swing by. John Hall. Norwood, please. I find it's the only thing that can keep me from nodding off on the night shift. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate your nice, normal, straightforward request. One with no sinister undertones for once. I'll also say, uh, given recent events, I, I do appreciate someone literally asking for something to uh, help keep them up at night. Daisy Doc. Cremula Familiaris. A simple potion that will grant courage can be brewed from the leaves. It is said that ancient warriors would take it before going into battle. Very distinctive leaves. Interesting. Um, once again, though, unlike anything we currently have in stock... And end of day. Wow, that was quick. I feel like we barely had any customers today. Um, well, we have time to spare, so let's go for one more day. Elabor? The first letter of the Latin name of the plant known as Golden Light. The number of petals on a lucky Cabalia flower. That seems pretty straightforward. When her chance finally came, she did not hesitate, even for a moment. Afterwards, when the Arda was dead, she felt only elation. Years after she had first laid eyes on the book, she had what she needed. So our dreams have gone from distant past to current events. That is uh, somewhat troubling. I think the Arda was killed the first or second day we came into town. I'll bet the next dream is about the murder at Black Comb. Day 12. Tuesday. First things first, let's figure out this dream card. And we already know that Golden Light is actually Weeping Bell, because we just gave it to someone the other day. But we need the Latin name. Lamentum Nixus. 
L. And yeah, that's golden light. So we're looking at coordinates here, because our second clue is a number. L something. Seven. L seven. L7. I amble through Meadowland, stopping every so often to examine any wildflowers that catch my eye. Buttercups, daisies, cowslips, red clover, knapweed, cat's ear. And hidden among them, something new for my collection. Yellow cattails. And that one looks very familiar. Somewhat pungent. Thank you, very informative, me. I do think we know those leaves, though. The flowers are blue. Cool. Is it just me, or is our character getting worse at analyzing plants the further we get into this campaign? I mean, look, I know it's just part of the puzzle process, but uh, it does feel like our character keeps focusing on every possible red herring when we put these things under the microscope. Oh, yep, there we go. That is a vulum. Okay, you know what? The uh, pungent clue does actually apply. A sometimes overpowering scent. But the real identifier here is clearly that illustration of the leaves. That is practically identical. And then that other one. Those are very distinctive flowers. Like little bells. You know what? It is finally Tremblehuff. Yeah, yeah, that's the wedding plant. Like a row of tiny wedding bells. Tremblehuff. Man, I feel like it's uh, been a while since we've actually gotten to tag something. Also, I don't think uh, Wandering View wandered last night. That in and of itself seems noteworthy. Verona Green, the occult scholar. The Sisterhood was attacked last night. Bethany is dead, along with the new Arda and 13 others. Those damn fools with all their secrets. No amount of pleading with them could get them to see sense. But through blind luck, we have been left with a slender hope in this fight. Oh my. Sister Charlotte managed to escape the slaughter with the one thing that could help in the fight against the servant. Trust no one. Keep it hidden, but get it open. Yeah, no pressure, right? Thanks for that. Wow, so Sister Bethany is dead. That was... unexpected. Huh. Rest in peace, Bethany. But I guess that is as clear a sign as any that we are headed for the end game here. All right, well, I will uh, do what I can. Stay safe, Verona. We've got a lockbox with a five-pointed flower head carved into it. That feels like a pretty obvious clue. Actually, we have a plant that unlocks things, don't we?
Yeah, Brimlock. Or not. I guess I should have double-checked that first. Oh yes, definitely not that one. Brimlock protects you from extreme temperatures. But we do have something. We, we used it to open a gate back on day three or four. It was like one of the very first genuinely supernatural plants we found. Nope. Oh, this is going to drive me crazy. Okay, let's just go page by page. Clavillium, also known as Lovelock, with very similar leaves. Okay. Follow the Dudon tributary to its source. First is the corpse's friend, a reminder. Then comes the ankle grabber, the binder. Third is the fear bringer, fourth to lift a curse. Last a petal to secure black blood's reverse. Five plants. And we needed five for the ritual. That seems... That seems very straightforward. We also know some of these. The corpse's friend is the one with the poisonous seeds that then grow from your corpse after you're dead. Um, the binder could be Swift Snare, which we don't have, but we have heard of. Fearbringer could be one of those ones that create spooky sounds or lights. We have a couple of those, one which was used to scare squatters, and the other which was used to terrify a child. Lifting a curse is obvious. That's um, the one we just used to lift a curse on that woman with the coffin fit. And then that last one is obviously the cure for... for... for Gilded Dendra. So we're close. We definitely have three of those. And then we have this here, which might be directions to the ritual site, because, yeah, yeah, the Dudon River is right over here near the Great Oak. And that other clue we found mentioned that, um, that we're looking for something south of the Great Oak. So if we're looking for a source of a tributary, is that at the top or the bottom? Well, it has to be south of the Great Oak, so... here? No, apparently not. I guess we'll just uh, keep poking around as we find the will to do so. David Schaefer, the mailman. They're saying the Sisterhood has been attacked. Don't know much more than that, but those seeds of redemptionists have got all excited about it. There's a bunch of them chanting outside Pulliver's right now. Yeah, maybe, uh, maybe just stay away from those guys, Dave. But thank you. Foxfield Trident. Well, that one is easy. 
We are quite familiar with Foxfield at this point. From Foxfield, the trident points me in the direction of some foothills northwest of the Swinside Stone Circle. A faint path leads me over a ridge and into a dell. Here a plant thrives, sheltered from the wind. Oh, that's the, uh, that's the warrior plant. Very distinctive leaves. Bluish purple flowers. Once again, focused on the uh, decoy aspect. Getting a bit predictable at this point. No, not that one. Shoot, which one was it? Daisy Dock. Not to be confused with Lesser Mary Dock, which has a very different effect. I imagine we'll be uh, brewing up some sort of potion of courage at some point. Forest Vair, the hunter. I am going to Black Comb. I will kill this servant. My people have a saying. He who lives without fear does not live at all. So cool. I will not say that I am not afraid, but it would be no bad thing to die hunting such a noble adversary. I will take Ember Soul. Or I could poison you, which, uh, you know what? I think I'm going to refrain from doing. Especially after I may have, um, accidentally killed the Sisterhood? So, I mean, I want to, uh, I want to get something out of having our Duenna bless our hunts. Oh, shoot, do we not have that one? Wait, yes, we do, we do. Razor Sharp Leaves. That's the, uh, plant with luminescent flowers. You know what? The cross-section is deliberately misleading, but I can see it now. Also, that's the plant we didn't use when we left an offering to Arduina. Good luck, forest. Widow's Woe. Really? That does not bode well for his hunt. Metis Formidolosis. Said to induce fear, also called Kempfoot, partly due to its unpleasant scent. Dainty dark flowers grow out from a bed of long, thin leaves. Which is one of the five we need for the ritual. And I believe... This one, which we've been shuffling around for a while now. Yeah, dainty dark flowers. So I think we're just missing one plant at this point. Um, Swift Snare, which we do not have. Alright, let's uh, take another stab at that ritual site. Ooh. 
in fact. Let's check out this very conspicuous clearing. A small stone shrine sits off to one side of the clearing. Five grooves run out from the center of the stone, widening into recesses at the base. Five slots for five plants. This is the right place, but I'm too early. I need Verona Green's help to perform the ritual. Fair enough. It's just good to know where this place is. And with uh, any luck, Forrest will take this thing down for us. Though I am uh, starting to have doubts there. Milton Forbes. Allow me to present my services. I own a small shop that specializes in curiosities. I would have thought that someone in your position ought to be interested in perusing our collection of manuscripts on elixirs, for example. Well, yes, that does sound very intriguing. I will certainly give it a look. Arnside Antiquities, 21 Orchard Road. And it's end of day again. Wow, okay. Let's clear some dedicated space for potions here, and we'll check this place out. I think that'll put us at a good stopping point. Arnside, right. The dark exterior of Arnside Antiquities blends into its surroundings. A tailor called Jones in an ugly-looking haberdashery, to the extent that I walk past it three times before I find it. Inside, however, I am greeted by a world of intrigue and wonder. Old trinkets sit alongside faded books and manuscripts, while strange utensils and machines, their uses unfathomable, occupy rows of display cases. It is some time before I peel myself away, returning to Undermere with two new recipes for elixirs that demand further study. Neat. Let's have a look. The Elixir of the Damned. Yes, that does sound like something we want. Made from a combination of Arbutum Alacritus, Maculosus Retinentia, and Mens Fortis, this powerful elixir is dangerous and extreme caution is advised. It is said to bring a person back from the brink of death, but at the expense of their soul. Those who have drunk it appear vacant and lost, alive, but no longer really with us. Why do I want this? I mean, we have a recipe, we might as well brew it, I guess. Arbulium Alacrita, Cavalia. Normally used to help the dead find peace in the afterlife. Mens Fortis. Oh, that's Dranthium. Interesting. That's the one that Drer used to give themselves supernatural perception. And Maculosis Retinentia. Henchuck. Which is the one that causes amnesia. Hmm. And there you have it, the Elixir of the Damned. Come to Strange Horticulture, now with freshly brewed Elixir of the Damned. We'll make a million dollars, if people actually paid us for any of this stuff. St. Quentin's Elixir. This elixir will enable any drinker of it to overcome their sense of fear, though it should be considered beforehand that fear is not always a bad thing. For example, it would not be wise to drink this near the edge of a cliff. A five-pointed leaf to grant courage, a red flower to protect the mind. 
a seed pod for luck. Called it, there's our elixir of courage. Though unfortunately, the uh, seed pod is almost certainly sheep snap, which we do not have. So we can't actually brew this one just yet. The first one though, that's Daisy Doc. We just tagged that one, that's the warrior's plant. And Candlewood. That's our red flower to protect the mind. So we have two of the three ingredients. We just need to uh, keep an eye out for Sheep Snap. Why is this one not tagged? Actually, uh, that first ingredient might be Butterdale. That's a five-pointed leaf. Well, we'll worry about that later. No, uh, no sense in fretting over it just yet, given that we're clearly missing the third ingredient. That said, we're at the end of day. We're pushing the hour mark, so I feel like this is a good place to call it. I feel like we've made some decent progress here, and then obviously we've made some slight missteps. Such as uh, the wholesale slaughter of the Sisters of Arduena. That, that might be my fault. But what are you going to do? What's done is done. It's like they say, you can't stop an apocalypse without cracking a few covens. We will uh, hit the pause button for now, but uh, we will pick up here next time. As this story heads towards its inexorable and inevitable conclusion. For better or worse, we're in this to the end. See you then. Oh, and remember, although I do love playing Strange Horticulture, you can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official social media feeds, or the official store pages. And if you'd like to help support the channel, then feel free to push the buttons that do the things, or maybe even check out the Patreon. Links are in the description.